Welcome to Agent Based Simulation Lab 2. In this lab sessions, you will learn how to create with heterogeneous agent. So we will extend the model that we developed last week to include heterogeneity among agents in the populations. You, you will also learn how to define social network structure between agents. So we can implement the concept that you have learned about networks. I hope you will enjoy these lab sessions and let us start. We will use the model that we have developed up to the end of phase 4. In this lab session, we want to add heterogeneity to the model. So we, if you look at in the last week model, so if you click on the, we look at the consumer, we specify that the ad effectiveness and the contact rate and the adoption fractions, the values are the same for all agents. In other words, all our agents are homogeneous, they are the same. That is unrealistic in our case. We want to make our agents to be heterogeneous. So let us now create agents with varying degrees of responsiveness to advertisement. Let us use triangular distributions with a minimum number of 0.005 the mode is 0.01 and maximum is 0.01 let's do the same to uh, adoption fractions so here we are saying that our agents have varying degrees of responsiveness toward word of mouth effects this will allow us to create heterogeneous agents now let us see how it looks like so let, let us compile the model and let us run it now. Let us pause for a while. On the bottom right corner, there is a, a button called the developer button. If you click on it, this will allow us to debug the model and to inspect individual agents. So in here, for example, to inspect individual agents. In order to do that, let's choose our the population of agents this will open up the agent types now you can see here this is our agent 0 id 0 you can see here the, the value of app effectiveness is 0.006 and the uh, value of adoption fraction is 0.01 now if you look at the uh, second agents agent 1 you can see the, the value of app effectiveness is different while the adoption fraction is still the same. Now, look if you look at the agent, the second agents, again you can see here the adoption fractions now is different, and the ad effectiveness is also different. So here, here we can see that our agents are now heterogeneous. They have different parameter values. Let us go back to the simulation again, and we can continue running it. Let us stop it there. Let us move on to step 3. In step 3, we want to add a parameter to the simulation model. A parameter to the model, not to the consumer. It's a parameter to the model. So we need to open the main canvas because this is where our model is. And we can create parameters and then put it into the canvas. Let's, let us put it here. Let's call this parameter population size. This is because we want to control the number of agents, the number of consumers in the populations by controlling uh, this parameter. Let us put the default value to 100. In this case, we want to create 100 agents or 100 consumers in our model. If you want to check whether you have done it correctly, you can go to projects and see whether the publish uh, the parameters it has been set properly in the simulations so let me just click here and then here it is so you can see the parameter is shown in here the model parameter is shown in here i hope that shows to you how to add parameters to the model level now let us change one more thing because now because we the population size can be different each time we run a simulations depending on the new parameter 
So let us change the y-axis of this chart because previously we set it to 5,000. Now we want to set it now to population size or you can set it to auto. It's up to you. Let's set it to auto. Okay, let us now compile our model. Now here we can see that, oh, there is a mistake. Straight away we can tell that, oh, okay, we make a typo mistake. We have an extra O here. So let us double click on the error message to know where the mistake is. The mistake is highlighted. We can simply correct it. Recompile our model. Now the model is correct. So now we can run it. Before we run it, let's call this simulation setting as test. Because we want to use this to test our model by running it with a smaller number of agents. The idea is because we use a smaller number of agents, it means the model will run faster. So it's easy for us to correct any mistake. So it doesn't cost a lot, doesn't cost us a lot of time before we run it for a large number of agents. Okay. Now we can see this is there is a test. Now let us create another simulation. So if you click on the uh, market and then click new, and then we can select new experiment. Because we are using uh, the uh, personal learning additions, we can only use three of the available options for the experiment. The first one is called simulations. This is the one that we need if we want to run our model. The second one is optimizations. This is the option that we need if we want to find the most optimum combination of input parameters or decision variables to optimize an objective functions. The third one, parameter variation, is used uh, when we want to run the simulations a few times by varying, by changing the value of one or more parameters. And then we want to observe the impact on simulation outputs. What we need now is simulations. So let's create a new simulations. And then let's specify that we want to copy the, the model time settings from test, from the existing one, to save time. Let's click finish. Now, the new simulation setting is created. So let's call it this line because we want it to represent as is system, the one that we will compare with another policy or another setting later on and change the population size because this is the real one we want to run it with a large number of agents let's say we want to run it for 5000 agents if you notice because we copy the model setting the model time setting from the test so that's why we have exactly the same setting as test let us compile our model and because now we have two simulation settings if you click on the small black triangle we have two options which one that we want to run whether we want to run test or we want to run this line let us run test you can see straight away the maximum is 100 you can see that we have a smaller number of agents and you can see here the population size is also 100 there are 100 consumers in the populations the model stops at 365 days let us close it now if you compare it with the baseline if you run the baseline now you can see that there are 5000 agents in the populations and you can also see here that there are really uh, there are more many more agents in the population here Okay, so I hope this will this explain to you um, how to set simulation model parameters, which is quite handy because as you see here, I can simply use exactly the same model for different simulation settings. I don't need to change the model. I just need to change the setting of the of the uh, simulation model parameters. Let us now do section C, adding network, tab 11. In order to change the network connection between agents, we can do it from the environment in which our agents live. So we know that the location of our agents is, in, is inside main. So if we click on the main, one of the properties is space and network. 
so we can keep the space as it is now for the network let's change it to a small world network we can keep the default parameters by default any logic will not show the connection between agents if you want to show the network then you need to go to co the consumer the agent you need to go to the agents canvas and then change the setting on, on the connection so click on the connections check the draw line between connecting agents you can change the setting if you like so you can change the color the, th the thickness of the line and so on and so forth uh, i will keep it as it is but by all means you can play around with that so let us compile our model run it for the small number of agents first now you can see the connection between agents one more thing that we need to change is that a user instead of sending a message to random agents or random consumer they will send only to agents or consumer that are connected to that user so we need to change the actions instead of send to random we will do it send to random connected so now we can run the simulation model in this case the user will only send messages to agents that are connected to the user so this set uh, this model is more realistic than simply sending message to a, a random agents once you are happy with the result then we can run it for the uh, for a larger model so in this case we can run it for the baseline as you can see here it's getting messy i hope you understand why by default uh, any logic turn it, turns it off because it, it makes the simulation run slower because a lot of uh, computing power is used for the animations instead of for the computations okay so that is the end of lab session 2 you can play around now by changing the network connections instead of small world network you can play around change the parameters change the network connections and then try to answer which network connections that make the opinions of a product spread faster in the populations okay so that is the end of lab session 2 so i hope you enjoy it by now you should be able to apply what you have learned to many different applications that requires heterogeneity as well as network connection between agents see you in the next slide